and welcome to the Septuagint versus the Masoretic YouTube channel. Today we're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 30. There are 20 verses. The first significant difference of note is in verse 3. So skipping ahead there, we see a significant difference in uh, the word heal thine iniquities versus turn thy captivity. So it's one thing to heal somebody from their sins, from their iniquities, versus to uh, take them from captivity, or uh, captivity to free them from slavery, or from their being captive. Verse 4, another significant difference we notice here, if your dispersion versus if any of thine be driven out. So we can see uh, there's a collective dispersion, which I think uh, kind of relates to, to, to the end times where uh, the nation of Israel, the people of Israel, the children of Israel will be uh, dispersed again. Uh, they're going to be taken, taken, uh, taken into captivity versus individual dispersion. So no, I think this yeah it does say dispersion versus if any of yours be driven out. Okay, uh, verse six. Another significant difference is the word purge. Purge your heart versus circumcise your heart. Uh, I think they do relate very closely because purging is to cleanse. Circumcision of the heart is very important. It's a very important topic as well. And is more important, to be honest, than physical circumcision. As important as that is, it's more important to be circumcised in your heart. So, but that is a, a difference. In verse 9, we see here, Bless you. And Yah, your Elohim, shall bless you in every work of your hands versus uh, make you plenteous. So it's one thing to just have an abundance. It's another thing altogether to be blessed. doesn't necessarily mean you have abundance. It just means that you will have uh, help from Yah. He will uh, make you blessed, whether that's abundance, whether it's the quality of life. Or it's simply that you are a person of more uh, substance. So it's not that you're you have health and wealth. It's that the inner man is renewed daily. You're th the spirit inside of you is stronger. Your relationship with your creator is better. So that doesn't necessarily mean you're always going to be plenteous. It simply means you have a more blessed existence. Uh, offspring of your body versus fruit of your body. So that is noticed twice. Uh, not a huge difference, just a, a difference of of uh, terminology. We have an addition in the Masoretic uh, for good was added. In verse 10, it says here the book of this law. So this is the book we are covering. It is the law of of uh, Yah. It's the Torah. And this is the book it's referring to. Written in the book of this law. This is the book itself. Versus this book of the law. Okay, I'm not sure what the difference is there. Let me just read the verse. If you will listen or hearken to the voice of Yah your Elohim, to keep his commandments and his ordinances and his judgments written in the book of this law. If you turn to Yah with all your heart and with all your soul. So it's talking about these are the commandments, the ordinances, his judgments that are found in this, in the book of this law. So the book of this law, it's the book, the Torah of this particular, of this, of this law. And I believe it's the law of Elohim. It's not like one law, it's his law. Verses, if you shall listen 
or hearken to the voice of Yair Elohim to keep his commandments, his statutes, which are written in this book of the law. So it's a book that belongs to the law versus it is the book of this law. So it is, so the difference there, it seems minor, but uh, to clarify it, it is the book of Yehovah, of Yah's law. That is the Torah, the five books, versus this book of the law. So it is a book that is part of the law. It's not encompassing all of the law. It's only perhaps this specific law, or belongs to the law, but no, it's, it is more clear in the Septuagint that it is the book, which is the Torah, the book of this law. Okay, it's, it's encompassing all of it. It's not only one law. Verse 11, we have our first a big difference of uh, this chapter. For this command which I give you this day, is not grievous, neither is it far from you. So uh, some people like to say, or some people will say that, you know, these commandments or, or the, the Bible itself is, is cryptic, it's hard to understand, it's hidden. Some things we just are not given to know. But that's not what it's saying here. It's not hidden from us. It is saying that it is not grievous. It's not burdensome. It's not, this law is not a burden as you know, people's traditions make it a burden, make it harder to keep. That's not what it is. It is not grievous, and it is not far from you. It is not in heaven above, as if there were one saying, Who shall go up for us into heaven, and shall take it for us, and we shall hear and do it? No, it was in heaven, because it wasn't given yet, but it is being transmitted to Moses and perhaps was transmitted to Adam, we don't really know, but it's being codified, and now we have no excuse. Uh, we will hear and do it, versus we may hear it. So we know we will hear it. It's not a possibility we'll hear it, no, we will hear it, especially if you're being called. Uh, and to the other side, in verse 13, who will go over for us to the other side of the sea versus go over the sea for us. So going over the sea is a little more vague, uh, no pun intended, but where are they going to? Here it's saying in the Septuagint, they're going specifically to the other side of the sea and take it for us and make it audible to us and we will do it, versus that we may hear it and do it. Uh, okay, it's not a huge difference. Audible and hearing is means the same thing. And we will do it, versus and do it. Verse 14. Uh, the word is very near you, and in your mouth, and in your heart, and in your hands, to do it verses that you may do it. So what is omitted here actually is uh, an omission as well. The hands part. So it's not uh, not that you're not doing it. It says that you may do it, but it's specifying how you're doing it with your hands. You're taking action. You're living it out. Not just saying it or speaking it or thinking it. You're actually carrying it out. You're executing it. You're executing the law. It's being lived. Um, so the order of what is written here in verse 15 is different. Behold, I have set before you this day life and death, good and evil. On the other hand, the Masoretic has it this day life and good and death and evil. So yeah, the order is different. It's not really contrasted as well. Whereas when you say life and death, you understand the relation and good and evil. Those are contrasting elements here. It's not really contrasted. It's just Bundling, bundling them up, and you have to make those connections yourself. So it's actually more, I guess you could say, poetic in the Septuagint. And they are pairs. Verse sixteen: If you will, if you will uh, listen or hearken to the commands of Yah your Elohim, 
which I command you this day, versus in that I command you this day. So this uh, Septuagint is giving you a there's a choice to be made, if you will. So there's a condition uh, that has to be met, if you will. So there's a choice that you are given. Okay, next is uh, verse 16. It says, you shall live, versus that you may live. So no, it's not open up to uh, you may or may not. No, you will live. You will live. Uh, if you do these things. Okay, verse 17. But if your heart change, and you will not listen. So, uh, heart change versus if your heart turn away. And then it says here, go astray, and you shall go astray, versus be drawn away. So the difference here, is that you are accountable. We are accountable for our own actions. Uh, versus if, if you're drawn away, that means someone else influenced you and you can blame them, perhaps. You're going to uh, make them a scapegoat. No. You are the one who is accountable for yourself. You can't blame it on anyone else that you did or said something that was not according to Torah. You have to take the the responsibility upon yourself and and change. You have to we have to be accountable for our own decisions. We can't blame anyone else. Unless we were coerced, but in this case there is no coercion uh, being alluded to. I declare to you this day versus I denounce to you this day. So declare means to inform so I inform you this day, you will utterly perish. So it is a, I guess you could say a friendly warning. It is courtesy versus I denounce unto you this day. So I'm condemning you this day. So that is not giving people a choice. It's just saying you're condemned. And so you're damned. You're damned if you do, damned if you don't. So this is a, uh, this is a formal announcement of the ending of a treaty, uh, denouncing. That's another definition of that word. A formal announcement of the ending of a treaty. So no, that's not what is happening. It is a declaration. It is uh, to inform uh, the people of the consequences so that they don't make the wrong decisions and don't make a mistake in regards to this commandment. You shall by no means, so it's more emphatic in the Septuagint, you shall by no means live long upon the land. Uh, versus you shall not prolong your days. So you won't prolong your days, but here it's saying you shall by no means, there's no way, if they go the other way, if their heart changes and they go astray and worship other gods and serve them. Okay, verse 19. I call both heaven and earth to witness this day versus to record this day. So it's one thing for heaven and earth. We think of those in the kind of uh, allegorical way that they're recording this day in some fashion. They're writing it down. But here they are witnesses. They are witnesses this day against you. Verse 20, to love, it says, uh, choose, you choose life that you and your seed may live. And this is uh, more specific as to how you do that. To love Yah, your Elohim, to listen to his voice. So I presented uh, earlier, uploaded a video about Yom Kippur, and I said, I closed out the video saying, you know, this day is important not just to be physically clean and to be cleansed from your sins, but that our inner person, our heart, is cleansed, that it's pure. And one of the purposes of this day is to give glory to Him, to point to Him. It's not about our, 
not about us, but about him. And one thing I forgot to mention is that it's also about love. This day is about love. It's to show our love to him. It's it's about a relationship with our creator. And that's why we do these things. That's why we keep his commandments, because it shows love to him. But going the other way, he's showing love to us because when we obey him, our lives are just better altogether. We become more like he is. That's love. His law is love. So to love Yah Elohim, to listen to his voice and cleave to him. For this is your life. You want to know what life is, the meaning of life? That's probably at the top. It's number one, right? The number one, the greatest commandment. Love Yah Elohim with all your with all your mind, all your strength, all your soul. This is your life and the length of your days that you should dwell upon the land which Yah swore to your fathers Abraham and Isaac and Yaakov to give to them. So the difference in this, uh, this last verse here it's written in the Masoretic now that you may love Yah your Elohim and that you may obey his voice. So again, uh, the difference here is you may love. No, to love. It's not wishy-washy. It is firm. It is uh, persistent. It is uh, a strong love. It is just to love. That's what it is, to love. That you may obey his voice. So again, uh, it's not you may and you may. Just do it. Just do it. To love, Yah your Elohim and listen to his voice and that you may cleave to him so again three mays that are inserted here it's not what's going on here just just do it as the the meme from Shia LaBeouf just do it love him listen to him cleave to him don't sit on the fence just do it and I think that's it for this video yeah that's all the differences but uh, just to explain further, so this is life, for this is your life, uh, versus for he is your life. So this is your life, to, to love him, to listen to him, to cleave to him, to have a relationship with your creator. It's very important. It's the most important thing in our existence. So this is our life, versus if you choose... Um, for he is your life. If you choose life, then you may live and also be able to love. Yeah. So that's the difference in the text um, when it comes to this chapter. Let me just review that last verse again. If you choose life, so you may love. Yeah. You may obey his voice. You may cleave. So if you, if you choose that, then you may live. He is your life. And you're also able to love him. That you may dwell in the land. Uh, so it's a lot of ifs here. It's not. <clears throat> it's not firm. You may. You might love him. You might not. You might listen. You might not. You might cleave to him. You might not. Uh, because he is your life. Um, yes, life comes from him, but that's not what the text is saying. To love him to listen to him, to cleave to him. This is your life. That also relates to the other verse in uh, Ecclesiastes, I believe, where it says, this is this is the sum, this is the conclusion. Fear God and keep his commandments. This is the whole man. This is a complete man. This is, this is your life, essentially. So to love him is to fear him. To keep his commandments is to listen to his voice and to cleave to him is to have a relationship with him, to depend on him. You know, you think of a child <laughs> holding on to their parent for dear life, you know, they're just com taking comfort in their their parent's arms or their, their presence. So that's all I have for you for this video, for this chapter of Deuteronomy 30. Uh, thank you very much for your time. May I bless you and make you be prosperous. Until next time, we'll look at Deuteronomy chapter 31. So until then, 
Shalom and Maranatha.